Alright, welcome back to Race Review. This is episode number 7, and we're in a different location! That's right, we are at Apex Racing Center in Paris, California. And so we are racing against some of the local legends. We got up in number 52, David Vasquez, the VLR factory driver. Rumored to be the best 206 racer on the West Coast. I would agree with that. He's extremely talented. And then we got number seven up here, which is Seth Willits, who is probably, I want to say, definitely one of the best racers of this Tri-C series, which is the name of the series that we're running. Tri-C is a, a 206, a sort of regional 206 series that runs in California. They ran at, they've been running at Apex Raceway, and they're going to be running at K1 when that does eventually open up. It's a great series, very well organized, great group of people who run it, great group of racers. Um, I've The race direction was impeccable, and the race craft from the other racers at this event was also very impressive. This track is a lot of fun, it's very difficult, it's very technical, it's very physically demanding. Um, and we also have about a 20-something cart field, it's a very big field, I think we are nearly 30 drivers, like we are at least 25, 26 drivers. So. We qualified in fourth in this race. David Vasquez, number 52. We got Seth Willis, number seven. We got our friend Santi, who you, whose YouTube channel you could also find. Um, in third place, number 71. These are all the local drivers. Vasquez, of course, is, is based in, um, I forget where it was, Santa, some, some of them were further up north, but nevertheless, we are lined up. We did pretty well. We figured out the track pretty well, and this is our first time at this track, mind you, so lots of pressure. We took a lot of time to figure out that setup, but we finally did get it sorted. So we're going to get in our time lines. We're lining up for the start. What are you gonna do? We're, getting, we're getting pushed a lot. We got the green flag. We are out. We are going. We are three wide. We are three wide going into turn one. Vasquez takes the lead. Oh, we get a little bump there, but we're okay. Apparently there was a massive crash behind us, and a bunch of guys got collected, but we're all right. Santi tries to take that draft. Vasquez holds it, and then we get that number seven. Goes right down the inside of the braking zone. Nothing really we can do about that. You know, he had that position. He had the, the track position, and he had the speed going into there, and we're just going to hold it behind him because at this point, we've got a, we've got a pack of guys behind us, and we really want to clear them. Well, I do at least. Um, it's all about playing strategic. And you can always try and be Macho Man and race everybody around you, or you can be the guy that wins. And I'm going to be the guy that wins. So he has a really bad slide there. He makes a little bit of a mistake, but we just give him that bump because we're not here to race right now. Right now, we're here to close the gap on Vasquez in the front because he's already pulled away a lot. That number 52 is fast, and that 71 is dropped back a little bit. So even if we don't get that 52, we still have a shot at second place, and all of us want that second place. So... Going into that heavy braking zone in here, this really slow hairpin. It's very easy to slide in this. That hairpin is slippery. We get over this bump. This track is very bumpy too. It moves over, and we get airborne there actually a little bit every single lap. Hit the apex. We're coming out of it just a little bit better than he does, but because we had to slow up to not hit him sideways, um, we kind of lost about a cart length there. Um, pop the curb, get up on him here closing back up that draft definitely helps a little bit this track is not super sensitive to the draft though so as much as it would be nice to get that draft um right now it's not helping us a ton we're already on the rev limiter we're not gaining a lot and unfortunately at the time i didn't quite have this corner oh we dip a wheel in the inside of the curb that was not nice um, but we're keeping pace with them. We're clearing the guys at the back, so we're getting better. Heavy braking zone again. This really slippery corner. It's very difficult to master this one, and I definitely struggled with it a lot at the start. We're just going to keep getting airborne there again. This is also very difficult braking zone. And we bring it out. Oh, nearly go off the track there again. Just getting a little bit too slidey. We went a little... We were, pressures were okay with this time, but it's very difficult to overheat your tires in these conditions. And we're always a little bit too wide there, too. And... Unfortunately, this being the first time at this track, I wasn't quite comfortable with it. 
and ended up making a lot of little micro mistakes like that. So that's really what has allowed us, or I should say, has allowed the number seven to really start to pull away from us. So we're hitting the brakes, heavy braking zone, but it's also all banked corners, so you got to keep that in mind. You can take a lot more speed in, but it's not quite just like a really ripped up corner because it is banked, but the banking decreases at certain points. This corner is almost off camber, so it's very difficult to not slide. And see that number seven is caught up to that 71. Is he going to go for it in the inside? Yes, he is. Goes for it in the inside. The 71 tries to switch back. Not nah, quite going to do it. So we're just going to tuck up right in between him because them battling here is exactly what we needed. We've got right up behind him again. Ooh, big jump on that curb. That curb is gnarly. And so we're right in behind him here. This is a good place to be. We've got shot at second. We just got to nail that corner exit. This is good. We're comfortable. We have started to clear the guys behind us. So really, this is a fight for second place. And all these three carts are involved in it. There's not many people right behind us. There's a couple people, and they're slowly falling back. But we're still doing pretty well right now. And so I give him a little wave because I know he's got a GoPro on me. And I'm sure he's seen that when he was editing it. And I'm wildly disappointed that he did not upload that to his video to his youtube channel because that would have been hilarious um but so we're just really keeping pace with them right now um my thought thoughts right now are that we're gonna keep pressuring the seven by working together we do start to notice at this point as we go with that massive bump and get airborne there actually um we do start to notice that we are slightly falling back and that seven is starting to pull the both of us despite my mistakes of course not helping but we do get that, those a couple mistakes will be neutralized by that draft in the straightaway, but he's also getting it. But it does help us to clear the guys in the front. He has a little slide there, so that helps us pull about a quarter of a cart length, slowly closing up on him. And we get in that heavy braking zone again. And we're doing good. We definitely came, we took a lot out of him in that braking zone and out of that corner and get airborne again as we go into this tight hairpin turn. And what you'll notice is that hairpin turn is actually cambered, but it stops its camber about two ways through that, two thirds of the way through that corner, which makes it very tricky and very easy to slide. And of course, when you slide out of that, it compromises you for basically every single corner until your next heavy braking zone, which is very tough. He's excited, he's getting a bump. I said, hey, let's try and pass him. Well, maybe not. Because we are also wary that he's a little bit slower than that number seven driver, so there is a possibility that he could hold us up and thus hold up our shot at that second place. So we got to be smart about this and make sure that we don't get dragged by by a slower drag, drag down by excuse me dragged down by a slower driver because we don't want to be in that position. So again, we get over that crest, get that turn in nicely done, not too much of a slide. He also did that really well this time. So we're really just trying to pick it up, but that number seven is just pulling us a tiny bit. And so now we really just got to keep it tidy and keep trying to push him on. We got to push up because if we don't, that's our shot at second place gone. That's my shot at second place and that's that 71 shot at second place gone. But at this point, I am very concerned that I'm not going to be able to catch S7 with the 71 in front of me. The draft isn't quite that much, and so we went for that overtake. It wasn't quite enough because we didn't have that gearing in the straightaway. We're going to go down the inside here again. Are we going to go for the overtake? No, not quite. But he makes a big mistake there, and that's where we take that opportunity because he goes so wide. He says, thank you very much, and we go down the inside. Sometimes a little switchback is a thing of beauty. And again, he's on the inside here. Is he going to cut us off? No, he holds it on the outside. And guess what? We just take what becomes the inside on the next corner. He left it open. We took it. And you got to take those opportunities in racing sometimes. That was a, close, a nice little clever move. I was very happy with myself for that one. Now I say, let's go get that number seven. He gives me a little push. I'm ready to go. We're going to keep pushing. It's going to be tough, but it's not impossible. And you never give up. If you're a true racer, you never give up. And oh, well, we have a big slide there. And we dipped a wheel in the dirt. And so we're going to get a little bump from him here, which is very helpful um, to negate that error. But we come in too hot in this braking zone. That was a slide, and that's that nasty slide that I was talking about earlier. It's very easy to do with this track. Oh, we got yellow flags waved ahead. Come up over the curb, over that little crest. Oh, there's a guy over to the side of the track at the exit of the corner, but it's not totally bad. We don't really need to slow down. It's not really in a position that's going to harm us, so we can keep going. That bump is nasty. I've taken that bump. I've actually been to a chiropractor for that bump. I'm not even going to lie. That bump messed my back up. 
I've got pictures of me going fully airborne over that thing. So we're going to move over to the center of the track here just to try and break that toe a little bit and kind of screw with the guys behind us because I know they're chomping at the bit. And they're not quite showing themselves to be very interested in working with me. Like, they don't really think that 7 is an achievable target to get. And again, we slide through that corner, making that same mistake again. That's not good for our exit speed. It opens us up to vulnerability when we go into this hairpin turn here. And so now we really need to stop making these mistakes because that's what's going to make us vulnerable. In a track like this, if you're a little bit, like half a tenth faster, you can pull away from a guy a little bit, but you need to make sure you don't make mistakes. We are faster than that driver behind us, but we cannot afford to be making any mistakes. And again, we move down the inside as we are two laps to go. We move down the inside to kind of break that toe a little bit, and we got a back marker here. We'll see how we navigate that. That could be a problem to deal with, so we need to be smart about this and also see if we could make that something that we can use to our advantage, right? Because blue flags can be a disadvantage and they can be an advantage depending on where you're at competitively. So we need to make sure we get as past this guy as fast as possible. We're not close enough to make this dive into this next corner here, but we're right up on him here in the exit. We're gonna go left, right, he moves over to the right. Oh, where do we go? I was gonna go in the dirt. He moves over, he let us through. He did get blue flags, he did know. And we just get through there nice and easy. And this was great for us because essentially, it blocked off the guys behind us, and this is the perfect thing. We are now free and clear. There's no one behind us, as so we have the white flag. One lap left to go. I'm happy. I don't have anybody behind me. I'm clean sailing. All I need to do is not spin out, and I've got this third place in the bag. And that is how you navigate blue flags. I want to replay that, because that was actually kind of a fun moment. That probably decided the end of this, or rather the result of this heat. So the important thing about navigating back markers is really to find the opportunity and you can't be scared to go past. Cause you have to remember they don't have any peripheral vision. So you gotta be, you gotta be able to dip a wheel in the dirt just to get past them sometimes. It's not an off track pass if they're a back marker. So that's how you navigate them. That's how you gotta get by them. You just force your way through because you have to recognize that they don't have the ability to quite see you all the time. So yeah, we are one lap left to go and turning into that hairpin turn. We still had a little bit of a slide there, still getting used to this track. Not quite totally driving it perfectly, but it's all right. A little bit of a slide there again, but we're not really going to be getting in that seven, so it's really all about just bringing it home at this point. Over the crest, always get a little bit airborne there. Use the rumbles on the exit. Straighten it out here. Straighten out these chicanes. Use that curb, it sends you flying, but it really sets you up nice and gives you an extra 10 so you can come out of that corner faster. That slide though is not ideal. And that slide there too also costs us about a 10th. And you can really see where a driver like that number 52 who's just gone will pull a distance on me because I was making all these mistakes. We ride, we drive the same frame, like we have the literal same go-kart, so it's, it just goes to show the level of talent that exists um, in this arena. So it's very exciting for me to race races like this because I get to learn so much about what other people are doing and what's working well for them and why they're doing so well, and then ultimately when I start to match them and even beat them, that's all the more satisfying and gratifying. So. We're into the pits. I have to say, this is the bumpiest pit entry lane I have ever seen in my entire life. And this is how you navigate it without bottoming your cart out. <laughs> Thanks for watching as usual. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. And of course, give it a like if you think it's cool.